the Dauphin ascended the throne as King Louis XVI of France and Navarre and Marie Antoinette became Queen of France and Navarre, after the death of his father Louis XV on the 10th of May 1774. From the beginning Marie had little political influence with her husband, who with the support of his two most important ministers, Chief Minister Maurepas and Foreign Minister Virgin, blocked several of her candidates from assuming important positions, including Choiseul. Marie did play an important role in exiling the disgraced Duke of Aiguillon who was one of Louis XV's most powerful ministers. Two weeks after the death of Louis XV on 24 May 1774, her husband gave her the petty trianon, with the freedom to renovate it, rumors soon spread that the walls were plastered with gold and diamonds. Even though the country was facing a grave financial crisis and the public were suffering, Marie spent heavily on fashion, luxuries and gambling. Rose Burden created dresses for Marie, and hairstyles such as poofs, up to three feet high. She and her court also adopted the English fashion of dresses made of Indian, percale and muslin. Riots broke out during the Flower War of 1775 against the high price of flour and bread. At this time Marie's reputation among the general public plummeted. Many started to blame Marie for the degrading economic situation, insinuating the country's inability to pay off its debt was the result of Marie spendthrifting the crown's money. Even Maria Theresa, Marie Antoinette's mother, expressed concern over her daughter's spending citing civil unrest it was causing. Marie had begun to make friends with some of her male admirers at court, including Baron de Bizenville, the Duc de Coigny, and Count Valentin Esterhazy. She also formed deep friendships with some ladies at court, notably Marie Louise, Princess de Lamball, who was related to the royal family through her marriage into the Penthever family. On 19 September 1774 she appointed her superintendent of her household to her new favourite, the Duchess de Polignac. In 1774, she took under her patronage her former music teacher, the German opera composer Christoph Wibald Gluck, who remained with her in France until 1779. Under the disguise of Count de Falkenstein, the Holy Roman Emperor Joseph came to France for a six-week visit during which he toured Paris and was a guest at Versailles. He met his sister and her husband on 18 April until 1777 at the Château de la Muette. During their meeting, Joseph spoke frankly to his Louis inquiring why the royal marriage had not been consummated. Later in a letter to his brother Leopold, Joseph described them as a couple of complete blunderers. Following Joseph's intervention, the marriage was finally consummated in August 1777. Nine months later, on 16 May 1778, it was officially announced that Marie was pregnant. Marie Antoinette's daughter, Marie Therese Charlotte, Madame Royale, was born at Versailles on 19 December 1778. During Marie's pregnancy two events occurred which would return to haunt her later in her later life. Firstly return of her friend, the Swedish diplomat Count Axel von Fersen to Versailles for two years, and Marie's brother's claim to the throne of Bavaria, contested by the Habsburg monarchy and Prussia. 
Marie Antoinette begged her husband for the French to intercede on behalf of Austria leading to the Peace of Tessin, which was signed on 13 May 1779 and ended the brief conflict, with the Marie imposing French mediation at her mother's request and Austria's gaining a territory of at least 100,000 inhabitants, a great retreat from the early French position which was hostile against Austria. This gave the public impression that Marie Antoinette, Queen of France, had sided with Austria against France. In the meantime, Marie initiated changes in court customs. This was met with disapproval from the older generation, such as the abandonment of heavy makeup and the popular wide hoop banners for a new fashion of a simpler feminine look such as the rustic robe a la Polonaise style and later by the Gaul. Marie started to perform in amateur plays and musicals, in 1780, in a theatre constructed by Richard Mick at the Petit Trianon. French debt remained a constant and difficult problem, increased further by Virgin and also by Marie Antoinette's insisting that Louis should involve France in Great Britain's war with against the North American colonies. The American Revolution was helped by Marie in securing Australian and Russian support for France which resulted in the creation of a neutral collation that stopped Great Britain's attack. Marie also secured the nomination of Philippe Henri, Marquis de Ségur as Minister of War and Charles Eugène Gabriel de la Croix, Marquis de Castries as Secretary of the Navy in 1780, who assisted George Washington to defeat the British in the American Revolutionary until its conclusion in 1783. Marie played an important part in the nomination of Charles Alexander de Callan, as Controller General of Finances, and of the Baron de Brital as the Minister of the Royal Household in 1783 creating the strongest and most conservative minister of the Louis XVI's reign. Marie Antoinette's influence became paramount in government through these two nominations, and the new ministers rejected any major change to the structure of the old regime. Such as the decree by de Ségur, the Minister of War which blocked the access of commoners to important positions in the armed forces, a challenge to the French the concept of equality, which was one of the main causes of the French Revolution. During 1779 it has been debated whether Marie Antoinette's second pregnancy ended in a miscarriage or that she may have experienced bleeding related to an irregular menstrual cycle which she mistakenly mistook as a lost pregnancy. Marie's third pregnancy was confirmed in March 1781, and on 22 October that year she gave birth to the new Dauphin of France, Louis-Joseph Xavier François. The death of her mother on 29 November 1780 in Vienna, caused Marie Antoinette to fear it would jeopardize the Franco-Austrian alliance but her brother, Joseph II, Holy Roman Emperor, wrote to her that he had no intention of stopping the alliance between the two nations. Her brother the Emperor Joseph II visited Marie in France for a second time in July 1781 to reaffirm the Franco-Austrian alliance which created rumours that Marie Antoinette was sending money to Joseph from the French treasury. Marie Antoinette's political influence did greatly benefit Austria. For instance during the Kettle War, when her brother Joseph attempted to open a naval passage on the Scout River, Marie Antoinette succeeded in obliging Virgin to pay a huge financial compensation to Austria. 
Marie was also able to gain her brother's support against Great Britain in the American Revolution and she reduced French hostility to his alliance with Russia. When the Princess d'Agmaine, the governess of the Enfant de France, went bankrupt and resigned in 1782, Marie appointed her favourite, the Duchess de Polignac, to the position. This was met with disapproval from the court as the Duchess was considered to be of too modest a birth to undertake such a high position. But Louis and Marie both trusted Mademoiselle de Polignac completely, paying her well and giving her a 13-room apartment in Versailles. The rise of the Polignac family benefited greatly from royal favour in titles and positions, but its sudden wealth and lavish lifestyle created conflict most of the aristocratic families who resented the Polignacs detested their influence at court, and increasing popular disapproval of Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette's fourth pregnancy was announced in June 1783, but early in November, on her 28th birthday, she suffered a miscarriage. On his return from America in June 1783, Count Axel von Fersen, was accepted into the Queen's private society. Even though some still claim that the two were romantically involved, but since their letters had been either lost or destroyed, there is no hard evidence of an affair. Marie's behavior led to the publication of pamphlets describing farcical sexual deviance including the Queen and her favorites in the court were growing in popularity around the country. The Portefeuille d'un Talon Rouge was one of the earliest pamphlets, which included the Queen and other nobles highlighting the immoral practices of the court. But eventually, these came to focus solely on Marie. As the attacks in the pamphlets increased, they coincided with the public's dislike of Marie's connection with France's rival nation, Austria. Marie's mother once again expressed concern for the safety of her daughter, and she began to use Austria's ambassador to France, the Comte de Mercy Argenta, to inform her of Marie's safety. Again in 1783, Marie caused public uproar again when the cost of the building of her hamlet, by her favoured architect, Richard Mick became public knowledge. She had also accumulated some 5,000 books and sponsor arts, music and also the first launch of a Montgolfier, a hot air balloon. Louis XVI created further unpopularity with his nobility and population when he acquired the Chateau de Saint Cloud from the Duc d'Orleans in the name of his wife on the 24th of October 1784. Their image was damaged further with the 6 million livres purchase of St. Cloud, which did not include the additional cost of redecorating, which in turn decreased the country's ability to clear its debts. Marie Antoinette gave birth to her second son, Louis Charles, the Duke of Normandy, on 27 March 1785. Her pregnancy did not escape the attention of the French public that the birth was nine months after the return of Fierce into court creating doubt about the true father and damaging Marie's reputation even further.
Courtiers at Versailles noted that the child's conception in corresponded with a period of time when the Louis and Marie had spent most of their time together, but these details were lost and the attacks on the Queen's character increased. Marie would have one further child, and second daughter, Marie-Sophie Helene Beatrix was born on 9 July 1786. Sadly Madame Sophie would only live for 11 months, passing away on 19 June 1787. Popular opinion had turned sharply against Marie, with the image of a licentious, spendthrift, empty-headed foreign queen. She had to live through suspicions of illegitimacy, continued publication of the libels depicting her never-ending cavalcades of court intrigues, her loyalties to her brother, Joseph II during the Kettle War, the purchase of St. Cloud, and most notably Diamond Necklace Scandal. Marie Antoinette became greatly involved in politics in her role as Queen of France in an attempt to shrug of her carefree image. By publicly displaying her attention of the care and education and care of her children, Marie tried to the negative press she had received in 1785 from the Diamond Necklace Affair. An Affair which public opinion had falsely accused her of her participation in defrauding the jewellers Bomer and Bassinger of their diamond necklace which they had created for Madame du Barry. A main player in the scandal was Cardinal de Rowan, who Marie had disliked since the time the Cardinal had been the French ambassador to Vienna at the time of her childhood. In spite of his high clerical position at the court, Marie never spoke to Cardinal de Rowan. The scandal began with Mademoiselle de la Motte tricking the Cardinal de Rowan into buying the necklace as a present to Marie Antoinette as a tool to gain Marie's favor at court. On the discovery of the scandal, all those involved were arrested, tried, convicted, and were exiled. Only Mademoiselle de la Motte was imprisoned by being given a life sentence to Pitti Salpetriere Hospital, which was also used as a prison for women. The French Parliament found Cardinal de Rowan innocent of any wrongdoing and allowed to leave the Bastille, despite the protestations from the Queen. Even though the guilty parties were tried and convicted, the scandal was extremely damaging to Marie one which herself on the monarchy never recovered from. When King Louis XVI started suffering with depression he started to seek the advice of his wife more and more. Together with her increasing political power and her new role, Marie attempted to improve the disputes brewing between the assembly and the king. Her new role brought to the end of the Polignac's influence and their control of the crown's finance. Even though there were cutbacks to the royal retinue and court expenses, it could not stop the deterioration of the financial situation, forcing Louis, Marie and the Minister of Finance, Callan, to call for the first time in 160 years a session of the Assembly of Notables. The purpose was to initiate much-needed financial reforms, but the French Parliament refused to cooperate. The first Assembly meeting was held on 22 February 1787, a meeting which Marie was not in attendance for leading to accusations that she was trying to undermine the Assembly. Following the failure of the assembly where no reforms were passed leading to the defiance of the king, Marie urged, Louis to dismiss Callan on the 8th of April 1787.
Callan replacement as Controller General of Finances and late as Prime Minister was Etienne Charles de Lomini de Brian, Archbishop of Toulouse, who was a close friend of Marie Antoinette. Despite his attempt to create more cutbacks at court whilst restoring royal power weakened by the French Parliament failed. This led to the dissolution of the Assembly of Notables on 25 May 1787. The failure of the Assembly was blamed on Marie, which drastically affected her political position. France's financial woes were the culmination of many factors, several expensive wars, and a large royal family who were paid for by the state and that most members of the aristocracy, privileged classes, and clergy did not want to trade their financial privileges in assisting the government. Although that Marie was not the sole cause of France's financial crisis, she was in the eyes of the public leading to receiving the name of Madame Deficit in 1787. Marie tried to win back public support by portraying herself as a caring mother, particularly in the painting by Elizabeth Vigie Lebrun which was display at Royal Academy Salon de Paris in August 1787. This image was tainted though when Jean de Valois saint remy escaped from prison and on arriving in London, she published damaging slander concerning her affair with Marie. The culmination of Louis and Marie actions worsened the political situation in 1787. One of the Queen's insistence the Parliament was exiled to Troyes on 15 August and Louis XVI tried to use a look to justice to impose legislation on the 11th of November. Finally, on 8 August, Louis XVI announced his intention to resurrect the Estates General, the traditional elected legislature of the country, which had not been used since 1614. Even though Marie was directly involved in all matters of state, her main focus was deterioration of the health of the Dauphin, who tuberculosis sufferer from late 1787 to the Dauphin's death in June 1789. Marie Antoinette was pivotal in the popular move to reinstate Jacques Necker as finance minister even though she herself was worried that if Necker was not successful in restructuring France's financial predicament she would get the blame. Necker's idea was to double the representation of the Third Estate in order to check the power of the aristocracy. When the Estates General opened on 5 May 1789, the split between the Democratic Third Estate and the conservative nobility of the Second Estate widened. Thus giving the Marie's rival, Duck Dorlans who had provided during the winter money and bread to the people, public admiration. The Third Estate declared itself a national assembly and took the tennis court oath and in doing so, people either spread the rumors that the Marie Antoinette, who was mourning the death of the Dauphin, wished to bathe in their blood. The Third Estate declared itself a national assembly and took the tennis court oath and in doing so, people either spread the rumors that the Marie Antoinette, who was mourning the death of the Dauphin, wished to bathe in their blood. Marie's urged Louis to remain resolute and not to concede to popular demands for reforms. 
Also she was determined to use force to crush the forthcoming revolution.